Australia's free trade agreements continue to provide new opportunities for Australian businesses. The Australian Government has now signed the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, also known as the TPP-11, with Brunei Darussalam, Canada, Chile, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore and Vietnam. Australia has also recently signed a bilateral FTA with Peru. These agreements are in addition to those already in force, including with Japan, Korea and China, which are delivering substantial tariff cuts for many Australian products supplied across these key markets, with some tariffs eliminated altogether. People will come to see this agreement as being a very positive instrument that we can all use to ensure a more sustainable future and a richer future that's been benefited by increased trade. FTAs aren't just about goods and products, they're also about services and cross-border investment. Services such as aged care, architectural, legal, a range of accounting services all stand to benefit from free trade agreements as restrictions are removed. Free trade agreements give Australian businesses a competitive advantage by reducing or eliminating tariffs. This means businesses can land their products in foreign markets with reduced upfront costs. Under TPP 11, new high standard rules will help transform trade in the digital age by promoting transparency of laws and regulations, particularly around data storage. Australian goods and services industries benefit from FTAs through increased growth, higher revenue, job creation and larger profits. The free trade agreement with Peru will help sell our products and services to our customers at a lower cost, which means that we'll be able to be more competitive and provide more monitoring systems to the Peruvian market. Now is a great time for Australian business to be moving into the Peruvian market because Peru is a country of considerable mineral wealth. That means there's a great opportunity for Australian mining businesses to enter the market in an era of rising global metals prices and make new discoveries as a result. The North Asia free trade agreements with China, Korea and Japan, they give us better access to those markets. The reduced tariffs mean that the cost of us getting product into those countries is cheaper than it would be otherwise. So it can give us a massive advantage within that region. The core benefit of a reduced tariff means that uh, an exporter is able to price that product in a more competitive position in that market segment. Empirically, the evidence um, through every trade agreement over the past few decades is that they are beneficial to all signatories and they tend to boost the trade of all parties and the growth of all parties. Australian products already enjoy that brand advantage, the perception of quality. So if you can combine that with the ability to get a better price point from an exporter's point of view, that's a, a very good combination. In the current world context, we're looking at more protectionism, more nationalism, and more restrictions on free trade. The TPP is the opposite to that. It'll give Australian companies market access to really important countries through reduced tariffs, and in some cases, no tariffs at all. The reduction in tariffs and the sliding scale opportunity means more freedom to explore import opportunities into South Korea, which is extremely exciting, particularly for a small brewery like Moobrew. It would be far too expensive otherwise to explore this market. We're very keen to form win-win uh, partnerships between Korean and Australian uh, companies. It's our fourth largest bilateral trading partner and it's also our third largest export market. So the opportunities in the Korean market are across the board, but particularly in food and agribusiness. And we've also seen uh, a greater interest in investment in advanced uh, manufacturing, technology and life sciences.